Hi everyone, welcome back to another Quick Tips. It's been a while since we've done Quick Tips and in late February, early March, we saw the COVID-19 crisis really hit the United States hard and that started to change the way we worked on a, a lot of our things here in the data science team at TIBCO. And we kind of dropped everything we were doing and we focused on analyzing the COVID data, providing insights to the community and the scientific community to help with the COVID-19 crisis. We've been working day and night on that. So moving forward with the quick tips I'm gonna be showing in the next few videos, it's all gonna to relate to the COVID-19 dashboard, which is primarily what I've been working on for the past couple months. Uh, but I'll be showing some general tips that are useful for any analysis. It'll just be in the context of this dashboard I've been working on. Now, if you want to see the COVID-19 dashboard yourself that we've been working on, you can go to tipco.com forward slash COVID-19 and you'll see this visual analysis hub where you can open up the the COVID-19 dashboard right here with this button. Um, you can also jump to specific pages in the dashboard to see different analyses. And if you wanted to create your own COVID-19 analysis, you can actually download a starter template, which we have that will automatically pull Johns Hopkins COVID-19 data, uh, clean it up and provide it for you so you can do, uh, again, your own analysis. That's a community template available to you for free. Now this is what the dashboard looks like and you'll start with a, a summary page that's scrollable and you can see all of the different analyses that are within this one dashboard and different buttons you can click to jump to those pages. And today I'm gonna to show you some tips on how I created this user experience. Uh, some things in particular is how to create a scrolling page. I'm gonna show you that. Also how I designed this for different screen sizes. We have thousands of people looking at this dashboard all on different screen sizes. How do I make sure that the visualizations show properly, things don't get totally crowded. Um, that's uh, another key thing. And I'm gonna show you how I hid the menu bars and I hid the, the status bar on the bottom. So you'll see here, uh, a typical view in, in the web player is you'll have this menu bar here and you'll have at the bottom the status bar. I've already turned off the navigation here. So I'll start right away with this tip, how I did this. So in order to uh, hide some of these features, you'll use something called configuration blocks. And we have a whole community page describing how configuration blocks work. I'll put this in the video description if you wanna see more detail. You can do some very sophisticated things, um, jumping to certain pages, applying certain filters and filter criteria, all when people just go to a certain link. So using the same dashboard, having some pre-configured settings. So here we can also turn off UI elements. And the way you, you go to these configuration blocks, the easiest way is you can go to share and go into copy link. And this will give you a little pop-up here with a link to analysis. But if you click on advanced, you'll see all of these other options here. So you can hide some of the menu options that are shown here. This is what are actually in the menu. So you can turn off things like download the DXP, uh, undo, redo, um, close, log out. You can turn off certain menu options if you like. Now the UI elements are below, and this is things like the toolbar and uh, the, the status bar, things like that. So I can turn off, for instance, the toolbar if I uncheck this. And what this is actually gonna do is actually change the link. So um, you'll see here, this is all of the uh, configurations here. And as I turn this on and off, you'll, you can see it here in the embedded mode, you can see it's 3-0. Now that's gonna be either dash one or dash zero depending on whether I have the toolbar on or off. So you can see that flipping. So I can choose to turn whatever I want off and that'll set some of these to zero. And you could copy this link just as it is uh, or you can just keep note of these numbers and put that in your URL. So here um, on this page, this is the same exact dashboard but it's hidden the um, the menu bar, and that's because I have three zero four zero and two zero. So that's to hide the menu bar, hide the status bar at the bottom, and hide the navigation bar. Um, so I could just give this link to someone. I could copy this. What you want to do is actually take it um, from before. It says W A I D and W A V I D. You want to take those out um, and just have it where it says the name of the analysis and options, and then those settings there, and that will again, turn off those UI elements and give you a clean kind of dashboard view. So next let's talk about the scrolling nature of this. I'm gonna go back into Spotfire Analyst for this. Now here in Spotfire Analyst, again, I have the scrolling page and you can right click on any of these tabs and you can go to page layout options. Now this is available in older versions of Spotfire. I think going back to even versions of Spotfire 7, uh, before Spotfire 10 uh, was released, you'll have this use fixed page size and this mobile layout. 
The mobile layout we discussed in another video, a mobile design tips, and what that does is when the width of the screen is less than 600 pixels that I have set here, it's gonna stack all the visualizations vertically so it's friendlier for a mobile, uh, a mobile experience. But even if I'm on a desktop or a tablet where I have more real estate, I can do some other things here and change these sizes. So here um, I have kind of 1238 on the width and I have a height less than 8,000. So I've told it that the screen is 8,000 pixels high. And what that does is create this scrolling up to 8,000 pixels. So continue to scroll down here. So to show you a little bit of how this works with other pages, um, let me go to these trajectories here. So on these trajectories, this page does not scroll. Um, it is, has everything fit into one page. And if I kind of pull this down into simulating what a smaller screen is, then you'll see that uh, the visualizations all kind of fall into a smaller area here. Um, and the page still does not scroll. Um, what I want, what you want to do though, is make sure your text areas fit in here. And so what you want to do is, um, so while the visualizations might come down smaller, the text areas uh, can't, they will not, they'll just create a scroll bar. So if you want to prevent that, you go to visualizations, arrange visualizations and lock visualization area. And you can tell it, Hey, lock this to the top, lock this to the right. And that will tell it don't resize these. And you can do this on the edges, the visualizations that are on the edges of the dashboard. So here now when I go to a smaller page, it hasn't uh, made a scrolling area for the text area. And this will work better for people on smaller screens that they can read this all at once. Um, but the other visualizations, the charts themselves will be brought smaller. And the size that I found worked best is uh, if you go into page layout options here, I have 1167 by 663. And this is keeping in mind that not only are people on smaller screens, but on different browsers, you have things like your bookmarks bar and you might have other toolbars in your browser. You have some, some pixels that are lost with uh, some of this vertical space. So 663 is a height that I think works best when you have a, uh, a smaller screen here. Um, you want people to be able to scroll, but uh, not kind of crunch things in together. Or if you have, um, for instance, like we did on the trajectories, um, you want to have it where uh, the, the text areas fit in. This is a non-scrolling page, but everything still kind of fits in here really well. So now let, let me show you how to actually design the scrolling page. So here I've just thrown some random visualizations in. A lot of them are the same. I just want to show you the layout. Um, and this is a non-scrolling page. What I do is I put a text area here um, kind of at the bottom just as a placeholder and then I go into my page layout options and I can change my width and my height so I got my width at 1167 uh, I got my height at uh, here it's at 1200 let's say I want this to scroll a lot I can put this at 5000 for instance and what this is going to do is kind of stretch all the visualizations down to fill that 5000 and I don't want obviously these visualizations to be this large so I can just bring everything up to how I want it. Let me do that for a second here. Okay, so I went ahead and rearranged my visualizations as I like them. And you can see I have this now scroll down. I added another little table visualization here and I have this now all scroll down. Now this text area is taking up all of this space. I have a lot of white space at the bottom. I can just turn off the title bar for the text area and leave that as white space if I want. Uh, and then I can continue to add new visualizations uh, in this space if I'd like to. Or what you can do is once you have this all kind of configured the way you want it, um, you can then go ahead and change the page layout options, change this down to something uh, more like uh, the size that you need. So I've changed this to 1200 and you can see that this has now crunched everything at the top. It's made room for the text area. I'll just X out the text area now and I know how much space I need so I can just bring this down to uh, the way I had it with the space that I already kind of determined that I need. And this way we can now have kind of some scrolling functionality and it'll have it all just kind of fit within this page. Now you want to do this when you're covering a analysis topic, kind of a subtopic, and there might be many different questions one might want to answer. They don't want to flip through a lot of different pages. So this allows you to kind of provide insights to different questions related to that topic all in one page, how the user kind of continuously go through this as you narrate the analysis um, and help them guide them through the insights that they're looking for. So that wraps up for today's quick tip. I'm going to be showing some other videos related to tips like this all within the COVID dashboard context. Uh, be sure to download that starter template if you'd like and make sure you subscribe to the channel to keep getting new tips like this uh, every week as we put out more videos. Thanks and we'll see you next time.